Let's get into this now. Violence against children in South Africa surged in late 2021 with a 30% jump in attempted murders and 352 children killed. According to new figures released by the South African Police Minister Begitzele, figures for October until the end of December showed 394 children were victims of attempted murders, while the number of children killed dropped by 5.6% from a year ago. In total, 6,800 59 people, including the 352 children, were murdered in South Africa in the last three months of 2021, an increase of almost 9% compared to a year earlier. Now, let's discuss this further. We are now joined by Steve Miller from Save the Children. He's the CEO of that organization. Steve, thank you so much for your time uh, this afternoon. Thank you. Thanks for having me, and good day to your listeners and viewers. 352 children were murdered in South Africa in the last three months of 2021. What's your reaction to this number, Steve? Yeah, Nazi, it's uh, deeply unacceptable on, on every level, I think, to, to any South African. Our child homicide rate is roughly double the global average. And uh, almost every year, we have over 1,000 children who are murdered. So, yes, deeply unacceptable. But I think, and perhaps we can discuss this, but I think we need to, yes, look at it through a criminal justice lens, but this is a very complex social problem that needs to be addressed on many levels. Yeah, I mean, you, you talk about it being very complex. I, I, I don't know how much you've seen of the last clip where police were raiding uh, various nightclubs in, in KZN. And, and one of the comments that that officer made there was that, you know, we, we're trying to make sure that we reduce the number of women who are actually visiting these establishments because this is where most of the murders occur. Uh, now, I mean, if we try and deal with just some of these killings, uh, particularly as it relates to women and children, where do we even begin? I mean, are, are nightclubs the, the first step of, of you know, of, um, of defense or of uh, prevention? Yeah, so I think that's a natural uh, response to, to hearing about these numbers and seeing what's happening in South Africa. I think all of us uh, are, are angry and, and frustrated and, and to a degree confused. And people often think about retribution. They think about how... Can we address this perhaps by closing down taverns, preventing people from going here or there? And again, that's your sort of criminal justice approach. And yes, there's a lot that needs to be done. It's very difficult for children in particular to report incidents to the police when they're abused uh, for various reasons. There's a lot that can be done there in terms of training. There's a lot that can be done in our courts. But again, if we're looking at this as a complex social phenomenon, we need to understand that the roots are deep. This is a country with a history of violence that we are all familiar with, and we've never really dealt with that history. We haven't healed that woundedness yet. Mm. And if you're talking about trying to reduce violence today in these numbers that you're seeing in terms of child homicide, then you have to look to issues in the home and positive parenting. You have to look to issues in the school and preventative work there. You have to look to the community, the social norms, and you have to look to the government to better coordinate, better plan, and invest in prevention methods, methods rather than response. Mm. And now, you know, during the release of the stats, I think on Friday, it was mentioned that the home is one of the three places where children are killed. I mean, this is um, quite shocking. But as we start to look at just some of uh, the policies and some of the um, you know, measures that have been adopted by government for one, uh, you know, one wonders what is being done. I mean, I'll mention the fourth national plan of action of children uh, that was endorsed by cabinet yeah. in October of 2020. There's also the national child care and protection policy and also other international yeah. obligations. So where do we even begin to make sense of what is happening and, and holding people accountable, uh, you know, as a result of some of these uh, systems that we have in place? Yeah, there's a lot in your question there, but I'm really glad that you, you mentioned the National Plan of Action for Children because it speaks to the fact that in South Africa we know how to deal with this. We do know. Mm. We've got a lot of smart people here and we've been dealing with these issues for many years. We know exactly what needs to be done and that National Plan of Action for Children captures that so well. What, what we don't do, 
And again, unfortunately, it's an old South African story here, is that we, we don't invest, and the implementation is very poor on the ground. So a lot of what we aspire to do, what we know works, uh, these multifaceted approaches simply aren't put into play. If I take our Children's Act of, of, of 2005 as an example, you know, that act, if you, if you read it, you, you'll see that it's mostly about prevention and early intervention. We know that the best thing to do is to stop this from happening in the first place. And I, I'll, I'll speak a little bit about the home, but we know that prevention is the best way to do things. But, of course, we don't invest in it. We wait rather for something to happen, for a child to be abused, uh, or, or murdered in the case that we're speaking about today before we start to see any sort of action. And then we have a, we have a response. So we, we're always sort of running behind things, as it were. And we really need to, to get our whole mind around this as a society. The government, we, we are world heavyweight champions in complaining about the government, but the government has a role as, as duty bearers, of course. And, and I think they're falling short in many ways, but they're also succeeding in many ways. We, as individual South Africans, also have a role. And the home, if I could just say in one very short, short, short sentence, the home is, is where it starts. If we can have positive parenting in the home, if we don't use corporal punishment, if we raise our children correctly, if we have families that, that make sure that children get early learning development uh, uh, opportunities, then you will see things change in South Africa further down the line. So there is work that can be done there. It saves the children, my, my organization, we work in positive parenting. We run uh, sessions for, for caregivers and for teachers, and we talk about how you can move away from violence as a way of, of disciplining your child to something completely different and let that child be raised in a different way. And mm. there you will start to see the changes in society. And I mean, it is commendable, the work that you do, but there's, oh, there's nearly 60 million people in this country, you know, and you are just but one organization. I, I mean, you mentioned... Um, you know, South Africa knowing exactly what to do in terms of curbing these numbers that we are seeing increasing year in and year out. Uh, you mentioned two things, investment and implementation. Perhaps uh, what are the most critical things in those two areas that we can do uh, as South Africa in line to, to what you are currently doing as an organization? I, I would say very much so that we start um, with parenting. I think parenting is, is, is central to all of this. It's not everything. Uh, violence against children, it's, it's like a spider web. Eh? Everything is connected and you, you can't act in one area without acting in another. So it's, it's not just to isolate that space, but I think it's so important. And there are so many really good organizations working in this direction. I. At Save the Children, we, we're, we're part of what's called the Violence Prevention Forum, and it's this really unique group of, of people and organizations that are somehow involved in trying to prevent violence against children, including people from government, uh, civil society, researchers, uh, individual experts, and we all put our minds together and try to influence policy and, and try to um, ensure that we don't duplicate efforts, etc. And a lot of what we're speaking about there, as well as other platforms that we're part of, is, is positive parenting. In 2019, you might be aware, nightly, but South Africa banned effectively all corporal punishment in all settings. So you're not allowed to, to beat children in, in schools and, and you're not allowed anymore in the home. And a lot of us, I'm sure, well, myself included and you, perhaps we, we grew up with, with, with beatings in the home. It's normal for us. And now people have to make this mind shift to something very different, which requires a lot of patience, a lot of time to really work with your child, uh, make sure they get the right stimulation, invest in them, respond to them, uh, treat them with respect, give them that confidence that they need. There's so much that you need to do. But we work in that space. A lot of others do too. And we want to do a big national campaign to speak more about this as well. But I think, yeah, it starts with us and it starts in the home uh, because the, if I finally might say, you know, the number one predictor of an episode of violence is a previous episode of violence, mm. which means that the people who are perpetrating violence, they've more than likely experienced it. Eh? They, they've experienced it as a child and they've learned that this is a way to either get what you want or to, to satisfy some other need of yours. They're familiar with violence. And the people who are 
getting violence perpetrated against them, the survivors, if you, and this is a real tragedy, if you are abused as a child, your chances of, of being abused later in life are so much greater. So I think if we, if we get there in the home, early years, long-term view, we, we can change things here. Mm. Uh, you know, we talk, uh, we're talking about murder now, um, and we're talking about the number of, of murders perpetrated, you know, against children. Let's talk about bullying in schools. Uh, I mean, I don't mm. know how these stats are, uh, you know, documented and recorded as it relates to suicide, as an example, because we know that bullying is another form of violence, and we are seeing it more now than ever before. And as a result of some, some bullying, it may not even be that, um, you know, extensive. We know that some children tend to uh, commit suicide as a result of school bullying. How much are schools and uh, society at large and even government, um, you know, in control of what is happening in our schools? I think at the moment, and you've hit the nail on the head, we have a mental health crisis with children in this country. A lot of it has to do with the pandemic that we've all been living through for the past two years, the way that that interrupted uh, their learning, the way that people were now having to live in very close proximity to sometimes their abusers. I think we, we have a crisis here mm. and we don't have the resources or the wherewithal. I'm not sure why, but we're not addressing the psychosocial needs of children. There's not enough of that happening. You've, you've got some nodes of excellence, of course. There's some schools that are responding really well. We've got fantastic social work organizations, etc. But the scale of the problem is, is so large. So I think we should all be really concerned about this, this mental health crisis and try our best to address it. Bullying, uh, it's difficult to provide you with hard and fast data on something like bullying. Um, it's something that's, that's been there, you know, forever. I'm, again, if I use myself as an example, I grew up um, in Mtata in the Trans Sky and in the public school, and, and, but bullying was, uh, was there, it was normal. But I think what we're starting to see now perhaps is on, on a different scale um, in that we're seeing a lot of stories of children who are, are being stabbed or killed by, by other children. Mm. Um, so bullying is taking on a completely different um, uh, nature. And what we're also seeing is, is online bullying, which I'll be honest, we're playing a catch-up job on, not just here in South Africa, but around the world. Kids nowadays are on devices. So in the past, you might have been bullied at school and you could go home and you would have your space. Now that bullying follows you, follows you home on, on social media and you don't escape it. And mm. We're only now starting to scratch the surface as organizations working in this space, but we will get better at it really quickly um, on understanding how that bullying is happening and how to stop it. But mm. yes, Unati, it's a, it's a very big problem. We don't know the entire scale of it, and we are not yet doing enough to address it. All right, Steve, thank you so much for your time. Really do appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. All right, Steve Miller from Save the Children. He is the CEO. All right, we'll take a